जय भारत जननी तनुजाति जय हे कर्नाटक माते जय सुंदर नदी वन गणनाणि जय हे असुषि गणदी जय भारत जननी तनुजाति जय हे कर्नाटक माते जय सुंदर नदी वन गणनाणि जय हे असुषि गणदी जय भारत जननी तनुजाति ಜಯ ಗೌತಮ ಜಿನುತ ಭಾರತ ಜನನೀಯ ತನುಜಾತಿ ಜಯ ಭಾರತ ಜನನೀಯ encircled by impenetrable jungles and sprawling in and around the sahiyadri mountain ranges lies malenadu on the highlands of karnataka vast interminable wilderness the spring tired music of a myriad birds the flaunting gorgeous greenery sublime silence and sanctified solitariness of the hills the immeasurable is your heights of the heavens the far off ebbs and tides of the blue mountain tops and the enchanting variegation of riotous rainbow colors the golden rays of the morning twilight the almost endless terrifying downpour of the monsoon rains the peasant folk the artless children of the soil heedless of the unmitigated cracking down of heavens in showers and covering their poor selves in tattered heaps of ragged woolen blankets or dried palm leaves toil ceaselessly in the terrifying chaos of the deluge that is malenar she conceals within her secret bowels many such sights and sounds and many colorful creatures human and non-human kuvempu born of peasant parentage emerged from such fantastically beautiful wild surroundings of malenadu in the highlands of malenadu a village very often means a single huge house surrounded by limitless sylvan forest lands kuvempu's village is kuppalli and his father venkatappa gowda named his son puttappa Our house sits pretty in the lap of jungle hills is how Kuvempu described his Kuppalli In the highlands of Malenadu a village very often means a single huge house surrounded by limitless sylvan forest lands wild tracts of palm trees paddy fields workers cottages This is the picture of Malnad village Kuvempu was born in Hirikodike in the Koppa taluk of Chikmagalur district. His mother Sitamma had been to her father's place in Hirikodike for her first delivery where she gave birth to a baby boy. The darling baby born on 29th December 1904 a Thursday was called Puttappa. This is the bonny baby Puttappa who years later in which the world of kannada literature and became rashtrakavi poet laureate shri kuvempu in hirikodige the birthplace of kuvempu on the very site of the now vanished residence a structure has been erected in order to propagate and perpetuate kuvempu's message of the universal man ananna chetana ruparu ನಾಮ ಕೋಟಿಗಳನ್ನು ಮೀಟಿ 
ಕೆದಯ ಬೀರಿಯ ಭಾವದೀಂತಿ ಕೆದಯ ಬೀರಿಯ ಭಾವದೀಂತಿ ಓ ನನ್ನ ಚೇತನ ಹಾಗೂ ನಿಯನ ಕೇತನ ಆ ನನ್ನ ಚೇತನ When Koo Vempu was yet a little boy, a village schoolmaster ran his little school up the stairs of Koo Vempu's home. The preceptors who came all the way from South Kanara used to teach the children the Kanara alphabet. The custom was to make the boys trace the letters on a sand bed stretched out on the floor. This was exactly how Koo Vempu too learned his alphabet. Moses a Christian teacher was employed to teach the children their lessons in English. He taught them the English alphabet, introduced them to books and the boys learned to call Igalu the master. Kuvempu when a boy of 8 years joined the AB school or Anglo Vernacular school at Tirthalli. It was here that he received his elementary and higher elementary education. Kallusara, a stone-covered culvert on the river Tunga, was a favorite haunt of Kuvempu. This was the only bridge, a slender communication link between Tirthalli and Kupalli in those times. Kuvempu's father, Sri Venkatapagoda, passed away when Kuvempu was still a boy of 12, but his education continued under the loving care and guidance of his mother, Sitam. It happened that one day Kuvempu's kinsman Hosamane Manjappa Gauda recited and explained to him the famous lines from Longfellow's Psalm of Life. Tell me not in mournful numbers life is but an empty dream for the soul is dead that slumbers and things are not what they seem. Kuvempu when he listened to the gist of the poem felt within himself a volcanic outburst of energy. His spirit was awakened no more the dregs of sleep or slumber. Devangi Ramanna Gauda discovered the boy's love of books and his prodigious genius. He sent him to Mysore for his high school studies and saw to it that he got a scholarship too. He continued his education in the Wesleyan Mission School, Mysore. He studied hundreds of books, having been urged by his own inexhaustible avidity. He went through the poetical works of many English poets. Milton, Wordsworth, Keats and many others. He gathered together his friends and founded a literary association called Lotus Leaf Union under whose auspices he recited the poems he had composed in English. There was an all Mysore youths conference in Chennapatna. He got the first prize in an English essay writing competition held on the occasion. It was in 1922 that Kuvempu published a collection of his English poems entitled Beginner's Muse. Mr. M. S. Krishna Iyengar admired his poetical talents and suggested that he should show his compositions to the Irish poet James Cousins, who had just then visited Mysore. Kuvempu met the Irish poet, Mr. Cousins. He read the poems and liked them. He looked at Kuvempu, head to foot, and said, you are dressed in your native style, but why have you written your poems in a foreign tongue? Well, English is a rich language and I can write with ease in English, was Kuvempu's response. But the poet cousins pointed out the example of Ravindranath Tagore and convinced Kuvempu that one could write in one's own mother tongue and still attain international acclaim. That dialogue of cousins and Kuvempu was symbolic of the conflict faced by men of creative genius in pre-independent India. An incident took place in the Maharaja's College during the time when Kuvempu had joined the university entrance class. Professor V. L. D'Souza had just made a speech. During the question hour, Kuvempu stood up and asked, What position does Mysore hold in the minds of the British public? Professor D'Souza replied, Cipher. 
There was a loud applause in the assembly approving the reply. It was sad to realize that the nation's reputation meant precious little in the eyes of the rulers. Ku Venpu was determined that the fame of the country was to be spread all over the world. In 1924, even when Ku Venpu was a student of the BA class in Maharaja's college, he had acquired profound knowledge of English literature. He had deeply studied Western poetics, Indian poetics, and Indian critical tradition. Ku Venpu came to know Swami Siddheshwarananda of Sri Ramakrishna Ashram during his mission high school days. Later, his friends strongly welded his relationship with the ashram. He was just then a student of the BA class and he visited the ashram almost daily. Discussion, exchange of ideas, recitation of his newly composed poems, participation in the evening prayer. The tender-hearted Swami Siddheshwarananda-ji drew Kuvempu into intimate circles of the ashram fraternity. Once when Kuvempu was taken ill, he had to be hospitalized. But the Swamiji came running to the hospital and got Kuvempu transferred to the ashram, where he personally nursed him. Thereafter, the ashram became a regular habitation for Kuvempu. He yielded to the persuasion of the Swamiji and began to live in one of the rooms of the ashram. His studies and poetry recitation continued. The profound calmness of the ashram surroundings best suited Ku Venpu's contemplative bent of mind. He was greatly drawn to the philosophical ideas of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa and Swami Vivekananda. Their thoughts, in turn, helped to elevate his life to nobler heights. Having obtained his BA degree, Ku Venpu returned to his village Kupalli. Kavi Shaila, or the poet's pinnacle, is a huge rock abutting westward right from the roof of the Kupalli house. The poet often ascended the edge of the rock, perched on it, and lost himself in deep contemplation and brown study. Kavi Shaila was the source of inspiration for many a poem of his. He even held serious literary discussions, sitting on the rock in the company of his teachers, Sri P.M. Srikantaya and T.S. Venkanaya. It was then that the place came to be known as Kavishaila. Their names are to be found inscribed on the rock, even now, preserving the memory of their meeting on the rocky ridge. Mysore University began the MA class for the first time in 1927. Professor A.R. Krishna Shastri wrote to Ku Venpu and got him over to Mysore where he was enrolled as a student of the MA class. Ku Venpu wrote his two plays, Jalagara, The Sweeper, and Yamana Solu, The Defeat of Yama, during that period. At a function held in Kalburgi, Ku Venpu himself played the role of Satyavan in his play. In 1929, he went to the Belur Mat and received Mantra Diksha from Swami Shivananda. Thereafter, his spiritual consciousness rose heavenward. He wrote in one of his poems, My whole life has been dedicated to contemplation. Why do I need to pray or count beads? The entire earth is the temple of Shiva. And why do I need to go into the dark, dingy temple? In 1937, Ku Venpu married Kumari Hemavati, the beloved daughter of Mr. Devangi Ramarna Gaura. The marriage took place in the nearby Ingladi house. The poet's marriage was a simple and unostentatious function, held in the presence of friends and kinsmen. No blowing of trumpets and pipes, no pomp and circumstance. It was Sri B.M. Srikantaya, the grand old man of Kannada literature, 
who had persuaded Kovempu to accept this marriage proposal. Kovempu, who had stepped into the status of a grihastha or a family man, viewed woman not as female but an angel, the very incarnation of the goddess Shiva. The mother who rules the universe, the illusion that sways over me has come to me as my consort, is verily Kuvampu's sacred conviction. To a poet, his family is also a temple of worship. It was after his marriage that Kuvampu composed a number of love poems. Out of the enviable felicity and honeyed happiness of this wedlock were born two boys and two girls. In 1929, Kuvempu got through the MA degree exam and the same year he was appointed a lecturer in Maharaja's College. He became a reader in Kannada in 1939 and in 1946 he became the university professor to head the Kannada department. He was the principal of Maharaja's College in 1955. It opened a glorious chapter in his life when he became the Vice-Chancellor of the Mysore University in 1956. It was indeed a tribute paid to the people and an honour done to the language of the Kannada land. A lecturer teaching in the Kannada department, the darling son of Karnataka, to whom Kannada was the very life breath and who was labouring hard for the cause of Kannada, was now for the first time Vice-Chancellor of Mysore University. Kuvempu as Vice-Chancellor served in an honest and selfless manner. It was due to his special effort that the university became an autonomous institution. Kannada became a medium of instruction at the university level. Again, it was during Kuvempu's regime that the efforts to acquire the Jayalakshmi Vilas mansion reached a successful culmination. Plans for new courses of study and development were undertaken in the new campus. A huge building for the library, guest houses and research laboratories were erected. An open-air theatre, an assembly hall, the Prasaranga, the faculty hall were newly constructed. Kuvempu rightly named this new spring of knowledge Manasa Gangotri and the new campus was inaugurated on the 28th of April 1960. In 1960, Kuvempu retired from the Vice-Chancellorship. Kuvempu's service to the Kannada language and the country is incomparable. In 1956, Kuvempu presided over the epoch-making convocation of the Mysore University and spoke in Kannada. It was for the very first time that a convocation address had been delivered in Kannada. On the 1st of November 1956, the first Rajotsva day was celebrated. Just then, the Kannada-speaking areas of different southern Indian states had been integrated into the united Karnataka state. Kuvempu, presiding over a special Rajotsva function held at Mysore in the Rangachari Memorial Hall, made a lyrical speech. In 1974, he addressed the new graduates of the Bangalore University at the annual convocation and said, The caste system has become a monster. We have to gird up our loins and fight unitedly to destroy this monster. He warned, if we do not cleanse and purify our country's political, social and religious arenas with the help of scientific and rational attitude, we can never escape total annihilation. Kuvempu never hankered after royal patronage, never bent in prostration before the arrogance of throne or crown. He had been brought up in an atmosphere of freedom, 
had developed a national tendency for free thinking. He thundered and roared like a lion. The nightingale that sings in the spring garden does not crave for royal titles. The burning red of the lightning flashes is beyond the slavery of the royal court. I am a bosom friend of revolutions and I owe no debts to kings and monarchs. His face breathes fire and his bristling tuft threatens with death and destruction. Another place which happened to be a source of inspiration to Kuvempu's poetry was the Kukkanahalli tank in Mysore. The poet used to go for a walk every evening along the tank band. The enchanting calmness of the area stirred his imagination and inspired colourful and picturesque ideas in him. Kuvempu loved the Devangi house as intensely as he loved his Kupalli. Every time he went home for a holiday, he was accustomed to staying in Devangi for a day or two, participating in hunting and sports with friends and fellow playmates. In those days, Sri Devangi Ramana Gauda was famous for his rational thinking and scientific temperament. In fact, he was a kind of a guide who gave new turns to Kuvempu's life. Kuvempu began to compose poems even when he was a youth of 20 years old. His first poem was composed in 1924 and thereafter he wrote incessantly and in many forms of literature. He has composed hundreds of poems long poems, narrative poems, essays, critical essays, biographies, plays, children's books, novels, and epics. In 1938, Kuvempu published his first epic novel, Karnuru Subbamma Hegaditti. His second novel, Malegalalli Madhumagalu, came out in 1967. Critics who recognized the intrinsic greatness of the work hailed it as the common man's epic poem in prose. In 1949, Kuvempu published his magnum opus, Sri Ramayana Darshana, an epic poem. It was the consummation of his long cherished dream, his tapas of nine years. Sri Ramayana Darshanam has won the highest literary award of the nation, the Nyanpita. In 1988, the government of Karnataka founded an award for the best literary work in Kannada. The first work to win the award was Sri Ramayana Darshanam. The epic as told by Kuvempu in his own free verse in grand style in chaste Kannada is the first work that brought the Kendra Sahitya Academy Award. In recognition of his unique service to literature, the government of India honored him by awarding him the Padma Bhushana and the Padma Vibhushana. In 1964, the Karnataka government honored him by bestowing on him the title Rashtra Kavi, the Poet Laureate. The universities of Karnataka, Mysore and Kanpur and many others have recognized his scholarship and honored him with honorary doctoral degrees. After the composition of the great epic Sri Ramayana Darshanam, the whole country has honored him. Kuvempu called fame an evil star, scoffed at it and tried to keep it at arm's length. But fame has faithfully followed him all along as an auspicious blessing. In the poet's view, his house, Udaya Ravi, the rising sun, is God's own abode. 
The rising sun is a sacred temple that has given the poet divine inspiration. In 1957, the saint Vinoba Bhave visited Udaya Ravi. The meeting of a great saint and the great poet was a day of rare concatenation. Sri Kuvempu spends much of his time in Udaya Ravi, in study. When intimate friends call, he opens out life's treasury of memories. He shares with them the inexhaustible collections of experiences. He takes them out for an outing in the bark of his reminiscences. Many years have lapsed since his lifelong consort and companion, Srimati Hemavattama, passed away. He considers his wife as the incarnation of the mother goddess. He has placed her picture close to the God's picture in the prayer room. He worships and prays every day. Kuvempu is a great poet of the Kannada Navodaya period, or the Renaissance. He has been disseminating his message of the universal man. He has enunciated for the purpose his five-fold mantra and seven-fold principle. Manujamatha, the religion of man. Vishwapatha, the way to universal religion. Sarvodaya, social welfare. Samanvaya, reconciliation of opposing ideas. Purna Drishti, full or complete vision. These are his five-fold mantras. His song of the universal man, Aniketana, embodies the message of the seer. Kuvempu cherished his dream of the universal man from the very beginning and built it through his works. Here are his words. Every child is a universal man at birth. We reduce him into a little man as he grows up. The duty of education should be to make him the universal man once again. Among the few towering giants of contemporary Kannada literature, Kuvempu is the tallest. This poet of forests, who rose from the highlands of mountains, rivers and jungles, has become the beloved poet of our nation. He is a great soul. He, as poet laureate, having embodied in himself the consciousness of the universal man.
ಮಳೆ ಬರ್ತಿರುವಾಗ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಚಿತ್ರೀಕರಣ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಕವಿಶೈಲದ ಗುಡ್ಡ ಕವಿಶೈಲದತ್ತ ನಾನು ನಿಂತು ಮಾಡ್ತೇವೆ ಆ ಬಂಡೆ ಅಜ್ಜಿ ಪಾತ್ರ ಬರುತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಆ ಪಾತ್ರಕ್ಕೆ ಆ ತರದ ಬಟ್ಟೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಗಬ್ಬೆ ಸರಿ 